the how the learnings from neil bark you took the learning from neil bark forward hai na rolling okay um you know i think uh, actually speaking everything that people learn i think without knowing it they apply it and the they don't often accept it after all when people say that oh this is new i have thought of it who knows where they've got the idea from i can't think of a single truly original thing that i've done if i sit and think oh this is something i did with children or this is something i did i can trace it to somebody i've observed some book i've read some theoretical piece i've read or maybe some film i've seen or some person i've seen do it which may not be an exact imitation but an adaptation so i think that is something people do um i certainly uh, what i learnt in nilbag i came with a certain uh, i didn't have any uh, biases i came with a certain affinity and uh, closeness to the philosophy and overall uh, you know uh, pedagogic principles of nilbag i was very happy that there were no exams i hated exams all my life i still do uh i i choose to remain out of it i have been able to survive i know many people can't if i tell my students now that i do tell them also that forget it chuck exams they are the ones who tell me but ma'am we can't because then how will we get a job that's a good point so do it but don't be tense it's okay so long as you just clear the basics it's all right you don't have to get into it but people get into it tizzy otherwise why are them why are the you know marks becoming impossible now you know what is the difference between 99 and 99.1 and 99.2 and oh god it's it's terrifying to see the tension that stress that children face children and anybody in this you know till they actually get a job so one of the things that i realized was that here was a space which was not making children tense that they were actually going at their pace it's one thing to think that yes exams are not a good thing or that competition is bad but how to go about uh, conducting a class and organizing a class without doing that um, so that is something i learned in nilberg you know that okay how can learning happen in its in its entirety when i left nilbag i was supposed to start my own school in jaipur for a number of reasons i couldn't do it now that's a different story i started teaching in a school a regular so called regular school called sardar sardar patel vidyalay at that time the principal there was vibha patrasarthi and she called me for an interview i had applied there and why did i apply there that was the question i applied there because i had a friend in college who had told me about the school since he had studied there and that they had the language uh, formula i mean the language program is what interested me they it was hindi medium at that time it was hindi medium till middle school english as a subject was there throughout they also learned sanskrit from class 5 and in the middle school they had learned one more indian language Uh, which at that time was tamil gujarati bangla later on urdu was added and one year i think uh, punjabi was also added but that would depend on the teacher but three or four languages were offered you know other indian languages so i thought that was wonderful you know and the fact that uh, they didn't have uh, they had exams but they didn't have ranking so there was no first second third anybody who did better than x whatever level was they got a merit card so the competitiveness was less because many people got merit cards you know so there was no ranking and the fact that uh, punishments were you know very i mean punishments of any kind were ve- not just frowned upon it was discouraged because there would be some teacher who would punish not since every class can't be monitored so that was one thing they also had a built in thing of uh, helping other people so the school had adopted a village and children 
older children were supposed to go and do some work with the, with the people there, with the villagers there, not in the school but other work in the fields and all. And we also collected a little bit of money out of our pocket money, since many children had pocket money, and uh, you know it was given to some cause that was there. So it could be some time to the blind schools or if there was a calamity there or part of it went to this school that they had adopted working there. So there was this giving back to society. It was very Gandhian in many ways because the first principal who had started it was himself a Gandhian. Uh, Mr. Nayak. Uh, so that was Raghubhai Nayak. So that was one thing. They also had a fantastic theatre and music program. And the children in Sardar Patel Vidyalay sang beautifully just like Neelbak kids. And imagine how I would feel in both places because I am not a singer. But I can, I, I, I can appreciate good singing. They both sang. I mean, they would open their mouths and pat, 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 you know, beautiful music would come out. Anything could be. And, and it was amazing, you know. So I would, of course, sometimes, you know, even when the national anthem was sung on some occasion, on 15th August, for example, I would just mumble it under my breath. Can you imagine singing it with the rest of beautifully, you know, 1500 kids singing beautifully? No, nah, I'm not going to let them hear me. So I never did music with them, unfortunately, but of course they were there. So I thought that I should apply here. And uh, the principal called me even there was no vacancy because she said that I've called you, do you know why? I said no. She said because you were at, I want to know more about David Hospital School. So I said okay, here is one lady in education who knows about Neil Bagh. So there must be something about her. So we had this long interview, meaning or whatever chit chat. And her, the first question was exactly what, in a different way, what you had posed that how will you, coming from such an open school, function in a school which everything said and done has certain boundaries because we work within the system, how would you, how would you survive in such a school and what would you do to bring into the school from Neelbagh? So I said, well, I'm sure, I mean, I answered her much the, the point that I said that whatever I've learned, I'm sure will come in and I I can't think of anything, but I can tell you one thing that let's not have exams in primary. She said, we shall see. I mean, I hadn't yet got in, but I thought, well, fine, you know, if here is a principal who's asking me what to do, let me say it. Yeah, but to do her justice, she understood people who were good teachers or who had the potential of being good teachers. So as a matter of fact, one year after I had joined, she's this came up again. I said, let's not have exams. Slowly, slowly, in first and second, then third and fourth. We'll go like that. Middle school, let them have. I understand we have to prepare them for boards. I'm not, I understand that. But we can still, you know, do it differently and all. She said, okay, what will you have without, if you don't have exams? What will you, what will, what will come in its place? How will you assess children? How will you what would be the process? What would you tell parents? So she said, you prepare a plan and show it to me. So I prepared a plan and showed it to her. And we did follow that plan with her input. So children in first and second didn't have tests or exams. They, uh, they sort the of... parents also agreed to that? That was... It came Ina as a... Uh, who sent a letter explaining. And because she had you know, brought in such wonderful things into the school, you know, which was already doing many things that she, uh, that, you know, I think they sort of believed it. And most important, my biggest task was, and that, that's what she pointed out, is to getting my colleagues to agree. And then explaining to them what is it that we are going to do in its place. Because we still have to send a report. That's something we have to. Uh, parents want to know and why not? Yeah. So what would, how would we go about it? So our reports used to be like detailed observations from parents. So every child's report, all the four teachers who taught them different subjects and the homeroom teacher who was like the class teacher, they wrote, including there was a comment by uh, the games teacher and the music teacher and the art teacher, which came later. In, earlier we didn't have that, then we, we brought that in. And we sort of, you know, not didn't have grades or anything, but it was a detailed, uh, not comment, but a long paragraph on 
what the child was doing, what were his or her strengths and where are the areas that parents could help. Because what the teacher has to help, I will help. Now, why should why should I tell the parent what to do? But what the teacher... So it was very comprehensive, those reports. And uh, all, all my colleagues, to do them, you know, I mean, honestly, it's to their credit that they took it very well. Of course, they would all tell me, you made us write so much more. I said, yeah, but you don't have to do uh, uh, checking of silly tests. No. That's a worse, actually. So, you know, they, 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 they saw the point. Yeah. To be honest, they saw the point. But you know how to phrase things. We actually had workshop on that. Oh. Yeah, because how, what, what to write? Because every child is so different. So what are the things that you have to, in what way to phrase it? Not everybody's language articulation is, uh, you know, clear enough to, clear enough to convey language, something yeah. to the parent. So we did have workshops on that and our uh, counsellor at that time, uh, Bindu Prasad, she was a great help and she also helped in art helping us articulating it. So for different subject it would be a slightly different thing and anybody who wrote in Hindi was fine because it was Hindi medium in any case and people felt it easier to write it, some of them uh, did feel it easier to write but some of them wrote in English as well so it was a mixed thing and I wish I had kept some copies of it because I would really like to see what I wrote but naturally we didn't have it's all gone in the file and what about the children what was the impact on their care exam nahi dena hai kuch nahi kuch nahi oh, okay so casual see when they came from prime, middle june from um, nursery they came all excited in class one. They sat on chairs, they had books, they wrote in notebooks. They were so excited. There was a teacher there, they were writing, they were doing English, they were doing this. All that was excitement for them. They weren't bothered about tests. So that's fine, no? That's fine, yeah. That's absolutely fine. In any case, as one nursery child told his mother, his mother asked him, What did you do today? What did you do? What did you do? Did you so gay. The mother was shocked. Or Ha bitha. So his point was we played, we had food, we slept. And maybe we did something else, maybe drawing he added to it, nothing else. Drawing was enough time passed, you know, he didn't really focus. We we had food and we slept. That was the focus. Play was also not. Mother was you know, didn't know what to do. So he said that, so she came and she said, oh, but you people do so many things, you do this, this is nursery. They said, yeah, but the high point is eating and sleeping. Because they had lunch, I mean, they had an early lunch, and then they all went to sleep in the school for one hour. It was great fun to put them to sleep. As they became older, they refused to sleep, of course. But little ones used to go to sleep. And so that was the high point. What else is, which school had where you could eat and sleep? You know, so he was very happy. He was, of course, he learned also. So they came from a very open atmosphere, and that is something that again Viva Ben had done, Viva Patsati, in you know bringing about this openness in the primary. And she had this uh, amazing quality, which I think a good principal, uh, I think all principals should have. I mean, actually, to be able to see what was happening in a real sense and intervene with good suggestions and productive suggestions right from nursery to class 12 in every sphere of the child's uh, life in school. So that's something, it's really to her credit that she was able to draw out very interesting things from uh, teachers. So I was not the only teacher who did something interesting. I mean, of course, I, as I said, I, did, I taught English also. But I didn't need to teach English, according to me. I did everything else in the English class except English, which nobody believes me, but that's true. Because English is something parents taught them. I had to do Hindi with them much more at later on, initially not, not in the early years. But as I said that I would do different things with them and uh, we were also, uh, you know, there was something called homeroom in this school, which came in the middle of the day. And that was a very important uh, time for children and students, uh, uh, teachers. So in the homeroom, it was a time where you could actually do a variety of things, which was, uh, you could talk to children 
it wasn't it wasn't about academic learning ah. it was other things so i did many things in the in, in the home room which were i guess offshoots from what could be done in nilbag uh, or the fact that you know we uh, you know that if somebody was you know if they were, if if i found that we were talking about uh, you know fighting and it came to fighting at home and in the school so it wasn't simply that i would do a discussion with them because what discussion can you do with 7 year olds you know 42 kids in my class it's a little difficult to do discussion discussion but there are other ways of doing it so i would use pictures i would use you know a story to do something i would take up an actual incident that had happened with them and we'd say okay this happened with you 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 show me how you it happened with you so it would be like acting but they would be enacting what actually happened and in that they would all be little heroes who would never fight who would never do anything <laughs> so that sort of a thing i mean of course i knew what was happening and to be honest so did the children yeah because they knew what they were doing and the kids knew what they were doing so it that was the way you know discussions would also come out so i don't know where theater came in and where nilbha came in but i know that whatever i did in the classroom it was important that i was able to do it at different levels for different children which means that no task was one type of task for all 42 kids all 43 kids but there were levels in it that uh, when children were reading there was a lot of peer teaching that i would do which again i actually uh, adapted from nilbag but the 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 actual thing was what david had said i mean he would he in handwriting you know when he was teaching and writing he had those italic scripts you know in in little strips and if you had a class of 55 as he did in when he was doing that english language course uh, training in madras he is not going to be able to look at every all 55 children and write in their notebooks so he had those italic writing scripts which were cut up pasted and cut up and each child would see that and then copy so i would use adapt that of making small things for different groups of people which they could then do at their level Uh, that's something that i did and one of the things that i did was there was a lot of peer teaching that i did and that happened in uh, you know in a variety of ways uh, sometimes i would make children sit in particular pairs and we had this system of you know changing seats of course i had a method in my head which i hope children didn't see maybe they did um, but uh, even if they did they didn't mind it uh, because if they said no today i want to sit here i didn't object that was also there so they would they would always be people teaching each other and it wouldn't always be the same set of children doing everything for the other people no it was also give and take for both and that means that you know uh, different skills and different abilities were being recognized of everybody so that is something so what had happened i mean why i'm telling you this is that what happened was uh some years later um, a child who was who came from the blind school he was admitted into uh, class 1 and it, the big thing because they wanted to see how one child would fit into a regular school so with the principal they must have talked something so viva benson sent them to boloi shri school i said i don't know brel but never mind we'll figure out something so i talked to the children these were 6 year olds i told them this child will come can't see how is that possible i said well it is possible no must be some problem in his something i must have said his the lenses are clouded or whatever he had and no that was they were also interested in that by the way the medicine medical part of it as if they would i mean i, I wouldn't have been able to explain so i said okay so let's see what to do to welcome him and what are the things that he can do and the kids themselves came out with it that uh, since he can't see so we should touch him when we say our name now they must have seen this in some film yeah. i can't believe that and even if they hadn't the fact that they thought it on their own i think was one step that i i didn't even do if even one child did it the rest would follow so what happened you know by the end of the year was that the entire class had learnt braille and i had 
I am just an idiot, that's why. I am very bad at learning languages. But the class had, I ensured it. Ensured meaning, I saw they liked it and I encouraged them. And Gopal, this child, he, uh, he was very, I mean, he was a very effervescent child. And his drawings and use of color was to be seen, to be believed. Yes. And the children saw that. They would come and watch him draw. Because how he felt the color, picked it up and drew, and whatever he drew, they were not figures usually, but they were, you know, kind of strokes of color. They were fantastic. So this art teacher of ours, he was, he thought that he has to do something with him. So he was partially blind or totally no, blind? No, he was totally blind. Oh my God. So they used to help them, uh, help him down the stairs initially. Later on, he could go oh, down yeah, because yeah. once you get yeah, used yeah. to it, because we had two, yeah, two flights of stairs, I mean two different stairs cases. So I would said that you use only one to begin with and I told the children also. So they were very helpful and of course after one year most of them forgot Braille. But a bunch of them remembered and one boy in particular, he in fact wrote books in Braille. I mean he made Braille copies of yeah. some stories and gave them to the Blind Association. I mean that was that boy doing it, not me. Uh, Gopal, Gopal came in and, uh, you know, had this influence. And why did there was influence there? Because the children were open. Yeah. And I think they are naturally open. It's, we stopped them from it. So all I did was ensuring that the naturalness remained. That's all I did and nothing else. So it's just amazing. So I was able to do it ton of things when I look at all the things I did. Um, so I was able... How long you were teacher in that school? 22 years. Oh my god. After Neelbag. Hmm. So you came out from Neelbag in which year? 77. 77. I joined in 81. Okay. So two years I was doing nothing. And that's okay. Uh, and uh, after that I did a formal teacher training course uh, because otherwise I wouldn't get a job in a school. Uh, that's a basic requirement. Yeah. So, uh, I then I joined Sadar Patil Vidyalaya, 81 and I was there. 22 years. Mm. 81, 91, 2002. 2002. 2002, I think I left or was it 3? Okay. can't remember. And then that's I, when I shifted, then I, I left that school and I went on to do, because by that time I had started doing, uh, uh, you know, uh, started working with teacher trainees of the Bachelor of Elementary Education. BLED course, which was uh, put together by the Department of Education in Delhi under the ages of a team of people, which was led by Dr. Nargis Panchpakeshan and Dr. Poonam Batra. And so they had evolved this course and prepared it after, you know, a two year survey and preparing the course and whatever other formalities were done. So this course is now functional, now it has been shut down this year by the government. Uh, but uh, it was, it started in two colleges and went on to eight colleges in five, six years. So at one point of time I was going to seven colleges and I was doing something because Poonam had brought me in uh, to say that there is a, uh, there is a, a, a whole, I mean they had, they had, they had space in their curriculum, in the, in the BLET curriculum to bring in expert te experts, meaning teachers who did not come in as uh, regular uh, faculty because they would need to have a PhD and a NET and all those things but as experts in their field that was the whole point so that's how the music the arts the theater that's how there was the inroad into it so I came in for theater theater was there in first year and third year and the, when we evolved the you know the curriculum for the two different years the idea was that in the first year it would be like an like an introduction to theater and a connection with learning um, but in the third year it would be a much more focused uh, like a not like a tool but a process of using theater in other subjects so you know to so some of these things that you learnt in first year could be applied there and that's what I hoped people would do. But I'm not sure whether it happened quite like that with everybody. 
I certainly tried to do it. So, what happened was that a lot of the things that I uh, did in certainly third year was not theatre uh, as, as well as you know uh, what is these days called classroom management. So, what is it that you do inside the classroom? Because that is something a, a teacher is, is most concerned about, you know, a teacher trainee. When she comes out of her course, of course, they also had an internship. But on the first day of internship, you face a class. What is it that you do? So, you know, uh, I, uh, that's what I hoped I was able to help them. And I think I have, because when I meet teachers, you know, who've joined, say, government schools and all, they say that we can't change the entire system, but we are able to bring in a lot of the learning principles and those things into our uh, subject teaching. That's where they have been able to intervene. And uh, I think that's fine, you know, I mean, and of course, attitude towards children and all that, but that the BL ed in any case also teaches, you know, how to work with children in an open and democratic atmosphere. That's the, the course is like that. So that's what happened. I also uh, found that because I was doing theatre, very intensive theatre, you know, uh, during my teaching years in Sardar Patel, uh, that also came into my classroom uh, quite naturally. And what I did in the classroom or what I worked with children or what I learned from them in observing them, in working with them, I would also apply in theatre. Mm. So, you know, when you are conducting a class, there is also an organisation in it, how you organise your class. It's not that you just walk in and walk out, you organise, you think about it before. So, that organisation also helped me elsewhere. So, as I said in the beginning that uh, there is nothing called actual learning and that learning is really far more interconnected than we think it is and I wish we would be open to that. It's because we stop ourselves yeah. that we are not looking at it.